Right, good morning everybody. Um, welcome to B, the first session in 10B. This is uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris Taylor, Chris Taylor uh, who's going to talk to us about Geiger counters and stuff. Um, I'll uh, round of applause for this gentleman, please. Thank you. And I'll pass Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming out uh, unreasonably early this morning to, uh, to listen to me. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, Geiger counters, as you probably uh, probably guessed by now, and um, specifically uh, some reasons why you might want to earn a Geiger counter of your, your own, uh, how easy it can be to, uh, to build one for yourself for not very much money, and my specific reasons. Um, for, uh, for building mine. <clears throat> um, uh, I'm also going to delve a little bit into nuclear physics, uh, which is one of many subjects about which I'm totally unqualified. So uh, if there are any real physicists in the audience and I uh, go too far off the, uh, off the mark, then feel free to wave at me and tell me what, uh, what a mess I'm making of it. Um, equally, if you're... Uh, ah, I see we, we have a physicist. That, um, <laughs> If you're um, confused by what I'm saying, then uh, let me know and I'll try and make it clearer. So, some of you may recognise this. Um, um, this is a sort of cliché version of uh, radioactivity. Uh, it's, it's green and it glows. Um, and this mostly dates to the, uh, the early days of uh, the discovery of radioactivity. And, specifically radium, which is one of the first elements, uh, radioactive elements, to, uh, to be isolated. And there was what amounted to a fad for, for radium. It was used for all kinds of dodgy things. And uh, one of the things that it was used for was um, it was mixed with zinc sulfide and incorporated into paint and used to, uh, to label up dials and things for, uh, for watches. Um, and it became lodged in the public imagination that it was, uh, it was green and glowy. The reason why it was, uh, was glowy is because um, the radiation stimulated phosphorescence in the, uh, in the zinc sulfide and that, uh, that made it glow. Um, having said that, um, there are actually some elements, radioactive elements, which do glow. Um, actinium is, is one of them. Uh, if you have a sample of actinium, it will glow blue. Um, but again, it's not actually the radioactivity that's doing that, it's ionising the, uh, the air around it. So if you had your actinium in a vacuum, then you wouldn't be able to see anything. Um, which is why you need a Geiger counter. Um, and uh, this is one that I built, um, which I've actually brought with me. So I'll, uh, I'll give you a demo a little later if I can uh, persuade it to work. So I promised some reasons why you might want to own one. Um, this is some... Um, the sort of radioactivity that uh, you might call background that you're, uh, you're exposed to every day. And as you can see, about 85% of that is natural. Um, only about 15% is down to things like x-rays. And a practically negligible amount is down to, uh, to fallout. Um, most of these um, uh, radio natural radioactivity is down to three elements. Uh, which is uranium, 238, uh, thorium, which is 232, and potassium 40, which is the uh, radioactive isotope of potassium. And as you can see, about half of the, um, the natural exposure is down to radon gas, which uh, wells up out of the ground. So at this point, I'll stop talking for a minute, and um, you can have a little listen to my uh, counter picking, hopefully picking up the, uh, the background radiation here at Eastman. I think the, um, the circuitry is going to interfere with the microphone too much, so you're not going to hear it clicking. Um, but um, I don't know if you can see that. It's, um, it's counting the, um, the number of counts per minute at the moment. Um, and currently we're sitting at about 24, which is towards the upper end of what you normally expect. is between about 5 and 25 normally. Um, so I'll leave that going. Uh, and this is where the radon comes from. 
its uh, decay, decay product of uranium-238. Um, those three radioactive elements that I mentioned are particularly um, important because they happen to have half-lives which are comparable with the uh, age of the Earth, which means that a large proportion of it that was, uh, that was incorporated in the Earth when it was formed is still, still around. And this is the, uh, what they call the decay chain um, for uranium-238. Uh, it looks more like a decay staircase, actually, but anyway. Um, and this, one of the products of this is radon-222, um, which, which can be quite dangerous in some parts of the, uh, parts of the world. Um, and I said I'd, I'd come up with reasons why you might want to make a Geiger counter, and I have to admit that my Geiger counter is not the, uh, not the best thing for detecting radon because it won't pick up alpha particles, and um, uh, radon is an alpha emitter. But you can see from this chain that some of the uh, products of uh, radon, when, when the radon decays, it produces elements which emit beta particles, and um, it will pick up beta, so uh, you should be able to detect it. Um, not very interesting. So uh, this is a, this is actually a radon map that's produced by the government, and it shows parts of the country where you're uh, you're more likely to be at risk of uh, exposure to radon. Uh, it tends to pool in low lying areas. So if you've got a if you've got a basement in your house um, and you live in one of these areas, then you probably need a radon detector uh, to be installed. You can see that Cornwall is very dodgy when it comes to, uh, to radon. No, there's a lot of areas where it's, uh, where it's a risk. And in fact, Cornwall is um, the one county in, uh, in England and Wales where they're not allowed to build nuclear reactors because the background radiation is all ready enough that you would um, exceed your, uh, your sort of recommended um, annual dosage, so uh, uh, they have to keep away. And uh, as it happens, uh, you probably spotted this is a, this is a, a zoom in on Eastern, and uh, we're in a radiation black spot or a radiation brown spot, I should say, um, because the Malvern Hills are very close and they've got a lot of granite in them. Um, the uranium uh, decays and uh, forms radians, radon, so uh, this is uh, one of the areas where you might have to watch out. It's probably a good thing our tents are well ventilated, isn't it? Uh, this is another reason why you might want to have a Geiger counter if you uh, if you got a fancy new kitchen and it's got granite worktops, um, then some of the granite that's that's used for worktops can be actually contain a lot of uranium. Um, people have um, tested uh, tested a lot of them, and about five percent of them contain enough uranium to actually pose a hazard to health if you uh, um, you know leave it around for long enough. So uh, watch out and. Uh, these are uh, these are some old railway sleepers, and uh, one of my uh, one of my friends at Milton Keynes Makerspace uh, gives away a purple. He's um, he's asked if he can borrow my Geiger counter because he's uh, he's got some of these, and um, he's heard that you can uh, if you get them from Eastern Europe, then some of them might actually be radioactive. So uh, he'd uh, he'd like to test them before he uh, has them hanging around for too long. And uh, bananas, famously radioactive. Um, you may, uh, may or may not have heard that. Um, it is true, and it's because they've got quite high levels of potassium in them, but effectively, you're not going to be able to detect it. I have actually tested a banana with my, uh, with my Geiger counter, and I can tell you I haven't been able to uh, find a statistically significant difference between background and banana, so uh, it definitely didn't go bananas. Um, having, uh, having said that bananas are high in potassium, uh, so are you. Um, the average human being has got about 140 grams of uh, potassium, and um, of that, about 0.01%, I think, is, uh, is actually potassium-40, which is the radioactive uh, form of it. But that's enough to, uh, to produce quite a lot of uh, radiation, and um, at this point I was, uh, I was going to demo it again, but um, as I say, my, uh, my Geiger counter and the microphone don't like each other very much, so I'll I'll just wave this at you. Um, you might recognise this. This is low sodium salt, and um, it's about 50% potassium chloride. And of the potassium chloride, about half of that is, is by, by weight is potassium. So there's about 90 grams of um, 
uh, potassium in this, uh, this canister. And my Geiger counter can absolutely detect the radiation from this. It's something like quadruples uh, the rate over background if you put, uh, if you put this close to, the, uh, uh, close to the GM tube. So you can buy stuff in the supermarket which is pretty radioactive really, but uh, you probably won't use very much of the time so it's not going to be, not going to be a risk. And um, I've also got some, uh, some rather more radioactive samples, uh, completely hazard warning. This is um, this is the guts from a um, smoke detector, and um, you can see the um, there's, a, there's a little sample of uh, americium uh, 241 buried at the, uh, the base of this thing, and that's emitting a constant stream of, uh, of alpha particles, um, which uh, which ionise the air in the, uh, in the smoke detector, and um, this uh, this can definitely pick that up if I uh, if I apply it to the back there. I would say the um, the count's about double, it's gone up to about, well it's a bit more than double, 50 or 60, uh, no it's still climbing, 120, 120 counts per minute, something like that. So I'll pop it back in this little case. Um, it's not detecting the um, the alpha particles in this case, but there are some, uh, there is some secondary uh, radiation which it picks up. If I, if I had an alpha detector then it would be going berserk. Um, but, um, and this is, uh, this is something else which you might find in your, uh, in your loft if your parents were into camping. These are gas mantles um, and they contain a lot of thorium. So I apply it to the back and uh, it's gone nuts. It's, um, it's climbing up 200, 300, 400 counts per minute. These things are pretty radioactive, um, which is why you can't buy them anymore. <laughs> they, um, it, they actually pose a, a risk to the people in the factories that manufactured them, so I think that's why they've stopped making them. Um, it's primarily a beta, uh, a beta emitter, that's what, it's, uh, that's what it's picking up here. So uh, we're up to 1,200 counts per minute. So uh, I'll close it up again. Um, now I happen to have those things lying around, but you can definitely take it too far. Um, this is a book about a guy that you may have heard of. Um, um, his name was David Hahn, and in 1994, um, he was a Boy Scout in America, and he decided for his um, one of his merit badges, he was going to build a fast breeding nuclear reactor, and he tried to do it in his mum's potting shed, and he, he came alarmingly close because um, somehow it, the um, various radioactive sources. He, he bought up hundreds of uh, old uh, surplus smoke detectors and thousands of thorium gas mantles, and he rendered them all down. And uh, he, was, he was trying to, uh, to build some kind of breeder, but uh, uh, whatever he did, uh, he, um, he managed to affect the neighbourhoods to the point where he could detect the, uh, the radiation from about four houses away, and he lived in a wealthy neighbourhood, so uh, um, it was declared a, a sort of nuclear hazard zone by the, uh, by the government, and they uh, came and dug up most of, uh, most of his mum's garden and carted it off to a, a nuclear waste dump. So, uh, have I, uh, yes, I've gone past a couple of, uh, so uh, this, this, is the, uh, this is the reason why I built my um, Geiger counter. Um, this is a uh, PET scanner, um, specifically it's a PET CT scanner, and um, PET stands for Positron Emission Tomography. Positrons are um, basically anti-electrons, so this, these are the antiparticles that I, uh, I promised in the title of the talk. And, uh, and as you may know, anti, uh, antimatter and antiparticles do not like normal matter at all. And uh, when, a, when a positron is, uh, is created, as soon as it comes into, uh, into contact with an electron, it's uh, annihilated uh, rather violently and uh, it generates radiation, um, which is what the, uh, what the scanner picks up. Uh, nowadays, they tend to be combined with a, a CT scanner which provides a detailed image of your body, and then the uh, PET part of it uh, will pick up um, the um, points of interest, which um, in my case uh, was uh, prostate cancer. Uh, I was diagnosed last year, early 2017, and they operated on it, but unfortunately the cancer returned, so they decided they were going to give me one of these scans. And about a week before the scan, I decided it would be interesting to um, 
have a look see and, uh, and find out just how radioactive they were going to make me. Um, fortunately, this, this is a decay curve for the, um, the element that they use, which is fluorine 19 And uh, as you can see from the scale at the bottom, oh, it's, um, it's a, bit, uh, a bit jumpy, my, uh, my laptop. I'll uh, go back. Um, as you can see from the scale at the bottom, um, in hours, from the time when you, uh, you actually uh, get injected with the stuff, Within 18 hours, it's pretty much undetectable again. Um, but the, uh, the syringe that they use is slightly alarming. <laughs> they don't inject it directly like that. They put it into a cannula, but they, they, do, uh, they do inject it and then run away very fast. <laughs> um, what, what they specifically injected into me was uh, a, a, an organic compound called uh, 18 f choline and Choline happens to be taken up quite strongly by uh, um, the uh, prostate cancer, which means that you can, uh, you can highlight it quite precisely. Uh, one of the problems about that is that uh, the, uh, the process that creates fluorine 18 uh, will destroy organic molecules. It's made in the cyclotron. Uh, so you have to, you have to manufacture the uh, fluorine 18, then uh, label your choline molecule and then rush it to the patient within about an hour, otherwise it's, uh, it's useless. So, uh, so it tends to get couriered around the, uh, the country from your, your local site, cytotron to the, uh, the hospital. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm skipping, uh, skipping pages again. <laughs> there we go. So this is, um, this is the actual process that goes on inside the, uh, the PET scanner. Uh, it's rather clever. They, um, they detect the, um, uh, the positron emission uh, uh, annihilation event. Uh, it creates gamma rays which actually travel in opposite directions. They, so they've got this uh, circle of detectors around you and it will then only register uh, gamma rays that uh, they, they emerge simultaneously in opposite directions and that, uh, that generates your image. So um, this is the uh, this is the counter that I came up with, um, which uh, again my friends will recognise because um, fortuitously when I was uh, when I was irradiated, it happened to be one of the uh, meeting days for the makerspace, and um, so immediately after uh, uh, my uh, my scan, I rushed over to the uh, makerspace and irradiated everybody there. Um, so this this um, this was sitting at the uh, at the edge. This uh, Jim, you, you took this, didn't you? It was sitting at the edge of the makerspace, and um, I got somebody to turn it on for me and then started walking towards it. And by the time I got within about three metres, it was going nuts. Uh, so um, that was quite exciting. And this is the, uh, this is the circuit board inside it. And um, obviously the most interesting thing about it is that nice big um, coppery GM tube, guided on the tube at the top. Um, the reason why it looks kind of old is because it's uh, ex-Soviet uh, Soviet Russia. Um, the um, various components of the uh, former USSR are selling these things off in the thousands, uh, very cheap on eBay. So you can pick one up for under a tenner. The, um, the circuit at the bottom is pretty straightforward, really. The uh, little chip at the bottom of the bottom left-hand side is uh, Texas Instruments uh, Positive Modulation uh, Controller, and that actually controls a simple boost converter which um, takes in 9 volts and boosts it up to about 400 volts which is what the, uh, the GM tube needs. Uh, when you've got 400 volts across it and then you get, uh, you get a radioactive um, uh, particle entering the, uh, entering the tube, it um, ionizes the, um, the gases inside the tube uh, which then has a sort of cascade which, uh, which generates a very short pulse. The um, bits on the right hand side are uh, pulse stretchers basically. The, it's a triple five timer um, which takes in a, a short pulse of about a few microseconds and stretches it up to uh, milliseconds, which is then fed to that little, uh, that little black um, ETO um, speaker at the uh, bottom there. So um, this was very simple and it, uh, it worked quite nicely for, uh, for demonstrating it. But a few, months, uh, a few months after that, I had uh, chemotherapy, and after that they wanted to know how it had done, so they scheduled me for another scan. And this time I wanted to know just how much radiation I was getting, so I decided to add a, an actual counter facility to it. So this is, this is the Mark II. 
uh, which is one I've got with me today. And I reused the, the circuit, so you can see at the back, that's the, uh, that's the circuit from the, uh, the first model. And I simply incorporated a new circuit board with various boost converters, an 18650 to uh, provide the power, and uh, a nifty little uh, OLED screen at the front. Um, but that's mostly pre, uh, pre-packaged to them. They're uh, sort of cheap Chinese uh, boost converters and things that I picked up for uh, pennies, really. And this is a, an overhead view of it. So you can see there's, there's a couple of boost converters there. Um, there's um, an Arduino um, nano microcontroller. And there's a um, charging circuit for the, uh, the 18650, so I can recharge the thing without opening it up. And there's a close-up of the, um, of the OLED display, which looks pretty smart. It also looks vaguely like it's a full colour one, but it's actually monochrome. Um, the, uh, the clever Chinese have just stuck a couple of colour filters over it, so you, you're stuck with the yellow strip at the bottom and the blue bit at the top. You can, get, you can pick these up for about £1.50 off, uh, off AliExpress, so they're, they're very useful, you know, um, very handy for, for small circuits where you've got room for a bigger display. Um, so these are the other, the other modes, I've got counts per second, and um, I also added a battery voltage monitor, well, just because. So, um, having done all that, and, uh, and irradiated my, uh, my friends another, another time, um, it actually got up to a quite, quite impressive count, it was about 110,000 uh, counts per minute when I was uh, first injected with the thing. I, I did take the counter in with me both times, and, uh, and they didn't uh, they didn't seem to object too much. Um, so the most recent thing is I've just had um, a course of radiotherapy that finished about three weeks ago, and this was the machine that they used to do it, which looks extremely swish, and uh, it's um, it's a rather impressive bit of kit. They um, the big thing at the at the top is the actual um, uh, it's actually a linear accelerator. Um, technically, it doesn't produce gamma radiation, it produces X-rays. Uh, X-rays are nowadays uh, a bit, uh, they're a bit of a conundrum, really, because um, it, depending on which, um, uh, which field you're, uh, you're in, um, they're classified in different ways. If you happen to be an astronomer, then the, what you, the traditional way of, uh, of doing this thing is um, the electromagnetic spectrum runs up through visible light, through ultraviolet, um, up to uh, up to X-rays, and um, and then finally to gamma radiation. However, that has kind of changed um, in recent times because of things like this linear accelerator. It can actually produce X-rays which are have shorter wavelengths and are more energetic than uh, gamma radiation that's produced by radioactive materials. So technically, it was a, it's an X-ray uh, device. It does, in fact, have two X-ray uh, emitters because the thing on the right-hand side is a CT scanner. And this is a very sophisticated bit of kit because it's um, when you uh, you lie on the uh, on the platform. That black platform is actually pure carbon fibre, and uh, it's made out of carbon fibre. First of all, so they don't drop you in when they uh, you you sort of uh, hung out over the edge of the thing. And secondly, because um, carbon is radio transparent or pretty much so, and therefore they can, uh, they can actually uh, send the beam in from underneath you uh, as well as on top, so uh, it gives them a lot of control. And this is the, uh, this is the guts of the machine. Behind the, uh, behind the public face, it looks a lot more like a physics experiment. And um, the way that the uh, radiation is produced, the, the yellow thing at the top on the left hand side is actually a magnetron. Um, it's, uh, I've had a look at the, uh, the guys, the radiographers uh, at the uh, centre where I was being treated found out that I was a geek. And they very kindly unlocked the, uh, the doors and let me, uh, let me have a poke around behind the thing, which was kind of them. And the, uh, the magnetron actually looks a lot like a scaled up version of the one you'd find in your microwave oven. Um, and the way it works basically is the uh, the magnetron pulses uh, microwaves into the uh, the long tube, which is uh, which is the linear accelerator, and there's a, a, a source of um, electrons at the back of the thing, 
um, the um, radiation actually accelerates the, uh, the electrons that are uh, injected at the, uh, the base of the thing up to multiple megavolts. They then hit a tungsten target at the, uh, at the head and the electrons uh, decelerate very rapidly and uh, gamma rays are, uh, are emitted, well, x-rays are emitted, sorry, I'm uh, mixing my terminology here. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's actually then focused and uh, that creates the treatment beam. So um, this is a rather clever little thing called a multi-leaf collimator and this also sits in the head. And these, uh, these little slabs are slices of tungsten and each, each slice has its own little motor and as the thing is, uh, is scanning you, the motors uh, push these, um, push these um, little leaves uh, in and out and it focuses the radiation exactly where it needs to be so uh, nothing gets radiated that uh, there shouldn't be, which I was very much in favour of. So um, after, I'd, uh, after I'd taken in my Geiger counter for the obligatory uh, uh, check of the uh, scanning process, um, I thought Part of the problem was you have to stay absolutely still when you're, uh, when you're being treated. And I couldn't actually see the, uh, the display on the Geiger counter. It was sitting on a chair about three meters away. So I decided to upgrade the firmware so that I could get a record of the, uh, of the count. And so I uh, rewrote the, uh, the firmware and took it in again. And um, the, uh, the Arduino actually has about a, a K of um, E prom a non-volatile memory, so I, uh, I managed to put in a recording facility which, um, which tracks the uh, amount of radiation receiving every, uh, every second and it was just about enough to cover the whole treatment. And these are the results. Um, the, uh, the bit on the left hand side is the CT scan and the bit on the right hand side is the actual treatment. And um, I was surprised to, uh, to see that the, uh, the treatment had much less um, apparent radiation than the, uh, the CT scan, but on a little, having given it a little thought, um, the, uh, the beam is much more focused for a start, so um, not all of it is going to, uh, or very little of it really, relatively speaking, is going to be hitting the, uh, the GM2. Also, it's, it's high in, very high energy radiation, and it's a thin walled tube, so most of the radiation goes straight through it, and it won't get detected. So what's actually being detected there is probably secondary radiation, where the uh, gamma rays are hitting um, items in the uh, in the room, and then uh, and then stimulating the uh, the detector. You may notice that there seems to be a kind of ceiling. Um, it looks as though it's sort of maxing out at, at some points on there, and um, I have no idea why that is. So if anybody's got any theories about that, uh, the, there, there was a physicist actually resident on the uh, the treatment centre. And she was kind of uh, intrigued by this, so that apparently this uh, graph has been passed around the uh, physics community. Um, so they uh, they kindly gave me some uh, explanations as to, uh, as to why it was, but I don't think they've got a definitive uh, answer as to why the uh, why you get those flat spots. So um, I mentioned that these things are cheap, and uh, this is one which um, I picked up a few days ago. Um, well, you know, I saw the uh, saw the ad on, on eBay. Uh, as you can see, it's nine pounds forty, I think, something like that. Looks like a new tube. Uh, they're called SPM twenties. Um, the the label's in Cyrillic. Uh, and this is the uh, this is the code for the uh, uh, the counter that I wrote. I put it on GitHub. Um, so if uh, if you're interested in building your own. Um, I'm going to try and provide a circuit for it as well at some point, but I haven't got around to that just yet. But the, um, um, the source code has been open sourced and is available. There's also a little Python um, program there which I use because I've implemented a rudimentary form of compression um, to uh, fit more readings in, and that's just a little decoder to, uh, to uncompress it. And. Um, so I, I briefly, uh, briefly mentioned some possible uh, upgrades to the, uh, to the thing. Um, uh, this is one of the upgrades which is actually on order, but unfortunately it didn't arrive in time for the uh, EMF camp. Um, this is a, I think it's an SBT9. I'm not very good on Cyrillic, but um, uh, this is what they call an end window uh, detector. 
And it's got a very thin mica window at the end of it, and this will pick up alpha um, particles as well as um, as well as the beta and gamma. And they're a fair bit more expensive. I think this cost me about thirty pounds. But the nice thing about them is that they will work with exactly the same circuitry that I've already got, so I can just uh, basically tweak the hardware and plug it in. Hopefully. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for coming and uh, listening to me. And um, I think I've probably just about exceeded my, uh, yeah, I have exceeded my allotted time. So if you've got any questions about it, our um, Milton Keynes Makerspace uh, tent is just across the, uh, across the way there. So you can come and, uh, come and have a chat to, chat to, uh, to me. And I'll be happy to answer, answer any questions that you've got there. Thanks very much. Thank